This is your world So let's vow to make it a better place Let every heart that needs to know Your love is here to stay Ooh, It's time we live a new life Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you We're saved by His grace So we embrace your love today We are changed Our worship today is not to practice a certain ritual. For God's earthly people, for Israel, God's earthly people, I mean, that was appropriate, but God has set His heavenly people free from that kind of worship. We can worship God at any time, in any place. We can worship Him continually and not just once in a while. We don't need a priesthood. We don't need a building. We don't need a special day. Our worship service is not just one hour on Sunday morning, but it is a life. It is 24 hours a day. It is 365 days a year. Whether we're sitting in the church building or walking down the street or driving our car or washing our dishes or putting on our shoes in the morning or setting our alarm clock at bedtime, at any time, at any place, in fact, at every time, at every place, we can worship the Lord. Are y'all listening to me? But we, we keep going back to Jerusalem. We keep going back to the law. We keep going back to the law with everything. We keep going back. We keep trying to find a way back out of something God delivered us out of. My, I will never give another dime because I, because I think I'm commanded to. Under this dispensation, God wants your heart. God wants your heart. And if you got saved just so you can show everybody how awesome you are at keeping stuff, and we know you don't keep it all the time, you're just showing us what you're doing right now. But if we went home with you, oh boy, we would all, we wouldn't be surprised, but we would see you just not keeping nothing. We'd see you cussing and fussing and being cool and acting like a fool, and then when you come to church, oh, y'all say mine. I mean, you ain't fooling nobody in the first place, but I'm telling you, you ain't got to play that little game. You, you don't have to be like that. If you get to know God and get under this covenant of grace, you can worship him in a spirit of <laughs> we got to stop playing church and we got to start living according to the new covenant instead of living according to the old covenant we keep going back to Jerusalem somebody says don't you want to go go won't you don't you want to go to Israel so you can pray on the wall God will really hear your prayer then go God hear my prayer right now what you talking about God, hear my prayer when I'm in my car. Glory to God. God, hear my prayer when I'm cutting the grass. Thank you, Jesus. He hear my prayer when I'm frying some plantains. Glory to God. And it's, it's stirring some oatmeal up. Hallelujah. Watching my car, I can worship the Lord. In the shower, I can worship the Lord. Hallelujah. I ain't got to go to the wilderness. I ain't got to go to Israel. Hey, glory to God. They that worship him, worship him in spirit and truth. Glory to God. But you keep trying to go back to Jerusalem. Paul wrote about worship also in Colossians, talking about living in the name of the Lord. Look at Colossians 3.17. Colossians 3.17. Man, I got to come down. I'm so excited. I, I, this is supposed to be a, a, a silent step to this place. But I can't, I can't help it sometime. I, I think about the goodness of the Lord and, and what he's done for me. Hallelujah. I think about what he's done for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that I don't have to go through all the complications of worship. Glory be to God. I don't have to have no stand, no table, no relics. Glory to God. I ain't got to have no person to hell and present them. And then if they say it's okay, I ain't got to do none of that. Hallelujah. I can be walking to the mall and say, oh, lift my hands up, and they'll go and worship right there. Now, I'm, it's going to be a little more than that, but, you know, 
right now I'm emotional and I'm, I'm hollering and I'm screaming, screaming because look at, look at the Lord again. Look at what he's done. And we keep ignoring it, trying to go back to Jerusalem, trying to get back under the law. Somebody said one time, they said, I can live by the law. No, you can't. For you to say you can live by the law is for you to say you are perfect. Why? Because the law is perfect. The law is perfect. It's flawless. The law is not bad. The law is perfect. The law is good. The problem is, is fallen man is not perfect. Think about it. I can live by the law. You're not, you're saying you're perfect, and you're not. And the Bible says in James chapter 2, if you offend in one area of the law, then you're guilty of breaking the whole thing. And there are Christian people who still think, oh, I can live by the law. No, you can't. You, he didn't say live by two or three of them and then say you live by the law. He said you got to keep the whole law. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I can live by the law. Colossians 3, verse 17, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do in word and deed, well, uh, I mean, whatever you do in word and deed, I mean, what does that leave out? It's kind of everything, right? Whatever you do in word and deed. So this, this verse encompasses our our entire activity. Now, this is the part where, if you listen to me carefully, it'll put some pressure on you. Because I sat there and looked at that, and I thought, well, my entire activity, oh boy. And I literally said, I'm going to need some help with this one. My entire activity. All right, now watch this now. I'm going to set you up now. Will you allow me to set you up? Paul writes everything you do. Do it all in the name of the Lord. Yeah, I agree with that. We know about praying in the name of the Lord, but now we're instructed to do everything in the name of the Lord. Do everything in the name of the Lord so that all of our life becomes a prayer. Yes, amen. God has designed our worship to go on continually. Worship that goes on continually. And I'm thinking, oh, God, I'm going to need some help with that. Not just a one hour on Sunday mornings. All of our life can be a prayer of thanks to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. All of our life can be a worship service for the believer living in the dispensation of grace. Yes, amen. In the dispensation of grace of God, according to Ephesians 3, there are no sacred days or seasons because every day is the Lord's day. Amen? Amen? And we need no sanctuary, for we are the sanctuary. Christ lives in me. All right, so that was, that was heavy, and I agree with every bit of it. I'm still trying to figure out, all right, how do I present my body? How do I do this continual worship? Well, let's look at the phrase of living sacrifice just for a moment. It, it was easy to go to the worship service at the church to worship God for one hour each week. But the worship that God says is acceptable today requires nothing less than a total commitment. To present anything as a sacrifice means that we put it on the altar and we leave it there. The problem with the living sacrifice, you got to, they keep wanting, they just want to keep getting off the altar. It requires constant vigilance. Now, Paul tells us to present our bodies, yet in spite of the cost that's involved, still do it. Paul calls this sacrifice. And then he says it's our reasonable service. He says it's reasonable. He says it's not excessive, it's reasonable. And look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 through 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 through 20. You are not your own. You were brought with a, bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 
So to present ourselves to God is only to yield to Him what He has already, what He already, it's His. It, it's His already. We're talking about presenting something to Him that's His already. When the Lord Jesus died on the cross for our sins, He not only paid for our sins, He paid for us. He redeemed us from every, every lawless deed. But He also purified Himself, His own special people for Himself. He purified us. He purified us from every lawless deed. That's according to Titus 14. He purified us for every lawless deed. And from the moment that we were saved, we have belonged to the Lord forever. Now, considering the fact that He died for us and that He gave Himself as a sacrifice for our sin, why should it be excessive to thank Him by putting our lives on the altar as a living sacrifice? Putting our lives on the altar as a living sacrifice. Why should it be thought of as excessive to thank Him by putting our lives on the altar? I mean, what more could he have possibly done to demonstrate his love for us? Hmm. 2 Corinthians 5, 15. Think with me. Think, think, think. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. I tell you, I tell you, I got to reading this. And that's why you guys, I got to teach this thing all the way through. I got to reading this, and I'm like, I, I get it. I understand that He died for all of us, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. I, I get it. But I know I'm going to need some help with that. And everybody in here want to do exactly what that is. Come on, let's keep going just for a minute. I heard a praise singer say one time that she wants her voice to be used to give God, she wants her voice to be used to give God praise and to give Him thanks. Use my voice like a puppet master uses a, a puppet. All right, follow me now. Acceptable worship takes that principle and applies it to every aspect of life. I want what I have, I want you to use. Now, what do we have? What do each of us have that wasn't received? <laughs> Paul writes, brethren, I beseech you to present your body as a living sacrifice. It is not excessive. It's not beyond the bounds of what's right. It's not too much. It's only your reasonable service. All right. Let's go to Romans 6, 4, and then verse 13, and let's bring this thing on home. This is so exciting to me. The Old Testament sacrifices were dead sacrifices, but there's no need for blood to be dripping down the steps today. <laughs> the cross paid it all. Now, Paul writes about a new idea, a living sacrifice. Paul had written about this kind of worship earlier in the book of Romans. Verse 4, he says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Verse 13, Neither yield, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, yield yourselves unto God, yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments, your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So Paul writes that we should present ourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead. Uh, okay, so we're presenting ourselves to God as people who are born again. But Paul says, that we who have been baptized into Christ by the Holy Spirit, we should walk in the newness of life just as Christ was raised from the dead. That's the life of a living sacrifice. It is the life of one who has been to the cross, and there they found forgiveness for sins, and they've been raised with Christ into the newness of life. Now watch this. You remember the Scripture in Galatians 2.20? Not I, 
but Christ that lives in me. When did Christ move in you? When you were raised from the dead, when you are born again, it's no longer you, but it's Christ that lives in you. Verse 20 says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Christ liveth in me. So, here it goes. When we worship the Lord by presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, it is not what we can do for Him, but what He can do in us and through us. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Your worship is going to be perfect because it's Jesus that's worshiping through you to the Father, and it's perfect. Woo! Glory to God. It's not what I can do for him in worship and presenting my body, but I'm literally saying I present my body to he that lives in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it's no longer, it is no longer me doing something, but I give you my body so you can do what you want to do in it, and you can do what you want to do through it. Lord, you got my body today. Do what you want to do when I'm at work. Do what you want to do when I'm walking in the park. Do what you want to do. Here's my body, God. It's my reasonable service. Here's my body. I am literally. Oh, this is a word. Here's my body. Do what you want to do in it and through it. Continue your ministry through my body. The ministry of Jesus Christ is still working. Continue my ministry. When's the last time you said, Lord, here's my body. There's some unsaved people. Work in me. Work through me. Glory be to God. Love through me, God. There's some situations going on that if it was just me, I wouldn't love like that. But I give my body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, love through me. The worship is holy and acceptable unto God because it's the worship of the Son living in us. It is, his, it, it is, it is worshiping God in the Spirit. Philippians 3 and 3, go there. It, it, that's, that's how you worship God in the Spirit. It, it's, it's Him in us and through us. Oh, I, I, I like to feel that. Like Jesus is offering God worship through me and it's perfect. That's how he want to be worshiped. That's what he said. You can build all kinds of extravagant temples. You can rebuild the tabernacle. But he said, uh-uh. A true worshiper gives me their body and allows the Christ that lives in you to work through you and to present pleasing worship to God. How often have you allowed, you, 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 you see what we just read? He said, yield your members as instruments. Remember, an instrument can't play itself. Somebody got to play it. Somebody got to play the trumpet. Somebody got to play the harp. Somebody's got to wield the scaffold. Somebody's got to do it. Instruments don't do nothing without somebody working through it. And that's what he's saying. Yield your members as instruments so that God can blow your trumpet, play your harp, wield the scaffold. <laughs> Philippians 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit. And we rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. The perfect worshiper. 
We sometimes don't realize that when the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, not only did he pay the debt of our sins, but he also offered and gave an offering, a sacrifice that was to God. The cross was his altar. His death was his worship. Present your bodies. Yield your instrument. Your body is now an instrument. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So now we're talking about a for real relationship with God. Do you have a real relationship with God where every day you're worshiping God by allowing him to work in you and through you. I am convinced that the life of grace is a yielded life. That's what it is. It's a yielded life. It's not a life of rules and regulations trying your best to prove to somebody that you can keep this or keep that. You can't do nothing without God. It's a yielded life. I know it takes time when you've operated in a way for such a long time, but you ask God to help you. You ask God to, to give you revelation. You, you ask God to take you down on this journey. Every message I preach, I hope is saying to you, oh, wow, this is a real relationship. We're not talking about coming and playing church and doing the church stuff that heaven don't even know nothing about, the stuff you made up and and, 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 and that's how you worship that. You, you hear people say that, that's how I do it. Well, that's not acceptable. You, you think just because you present it to God, it's acceptable. You think just because you write a $1,000 check out, it's acceptable. Sometimes it might not be, because if you didn't give it out of your heart, it's not acceptable. You should have kept it. I guess what I'm trying to drive at home is, if you're going to be a real Christian, it's defined as real relationship with God for real on an everyday basis. It's not coming to church looking churchy and dressing churchy and all the churchy cliches and churchy, 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 this is the way we go to church, go to church, go to No. Do you know him at home? Do you know him at work? Do you know him in your car? Double kush. Do you know him in your bedroom? Do you know him when you turn over? Do you know him when your head hits the pillow in peace and your sleep is sweet? <laughs> <laughs>